is is really what I think it is. Is it's not a spin-off. It's this is this is actually a new platform. What what is going on? I I I I realize what is going on now. Oh, the almost blue. We are getting a new traditional 3D Sonic game, which is crazy we just got one last year it's kind of was not expecting something this soon i say out of the almost blue because we did know that we were getting another mobile game at some point but this it's so it's just crazy it's like a, it's it's straight up a new game it's straight up a new entry in the series it's not a successor to sonic frontiers but it looks along the lines of something like sonic adventure it's like a it's like a a midway between Sonic Adventure and Frontiers, in that there's kind of a blend between Boost Sonic and adventurish, regular platforming Sonic. Can't forget that Cream the Rabbit is back in this game too. A really delightful surprise that tons of people have been asking for. They certainly got their wishes. The sheet looks incredible. So Rabbit Gang is celebrating, which is so nice. It's so refreshing that after years of not being able to play it as these people, we get to control Cream the Rabbit in a 3D game alone for the first time. Heroes did have her, but you know, she was in a team with Amy and Big. Also, Rouge is here, I guess. Like, I don't know why exactly they're pushing her so hard to be like the extra member. She's always been way more of her own thing, you know, that was a part of her character. So I gotta say, I'm not really a fan of um, her being alongside Cream and like, not, like it just, I don't know. It, I think the main reason they did it is because they want two of each control archetype, which I still don't know who's who, you know, who's flight, who's power, who's speed. I don't know, it just doesn't really make sense character and story-wise for her to be along with them like this. I'm 100% okay with her being present in more things. It's just in, in this manner, it just feels a little bit weird for her to be interested as Cream and Amy and Knuckles are. It's just, I, I, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta express, I can't get over the fact that we got Sonic Frontiers just last year and we're getting what, at least from what we've seen, looks like a mainline 3D game. This doesn't seem like a spin-off. It doesn't seem like an endless runner like most Sega Hardlight and mobile games have been. The trailer is good. The news it brings, not so good. The ultimate monkey's paw is here. And I mean, at this point, it's been highly publicized. Everyone knows the deal with this shit. It's exclusive to Apple machines. Biggest blue ball ever. I don't think anything like this has happened. Closest was, I guess, Sonic Lost World being exclusive to the Wii U. Even, even that kind of makes more sense. <laughs> we got Sonic and the Secret Rings and Black Knight and Colors, which was also exclusive to a Nintendo machine. And Sonic just feels right at home on Nintendo. So that's like the closest thing I can think of. A brand new platformer, action platformer, that's only going to be on phones, Mac, Apple TV, iPads, I pencil cases, just on Apple machines that support Apple Arcade. Why? Well, there'll be, I, I mean, I know the why, I wrote down the why, it's just, uh, why? Well, let's walk through the biggest reason why Sega may have turned to Apple in this occasion. Looking at the quality that this game is showing, the polish that's here, Sega will have been paid so much money to make this exclusive, uh, getting all of like the, the production costs uh, back, publishing, whatever. Not having that be an issue makes a game that can only give you profit. I don't think they can lose anything from this release. Probably the biggest reason they took this exclusivity deal. Well, they can lose trust, but huh, who cares about that, right? So I think even though it would have been great to have this on every single platform, which is the way it should be, Sega must have seen this as an opportunity to increase Sonic's goodwill. Everything about this looks so clean. It looks not with caveats like Frontiers and Superstars really had. You know, it, it single-handedly does look like a more high-budget, not high budget but it's like in a weird place where i don't know if you could consider this triple a a smaller scale game that has been given a bigger budget than smaller scale games usually get so it means that they can polish this to the extreme but that's what i'm trying to get out here as much as i enjoy the dash games i don't think anything hardlight has done looks quite as big as this does okay so also for those of you who don't know apple arcade is a subscription service which is basically like the game pass for apple games and also is it 790 i think 699 for 
access to a lot of mobile games. Stuff like Jetpack, Joyride 2, Slay the Spire, Sonic Racing, which was also exclusive to Apple platforms. Uh, not, it, it came out at the same time as Son Team Sonic Racing. I don't think it's exactly the same, but it's like a pot. It is actually a different game. The five people that did in fact buy Sonic Racing on Apple Arcade, <laughs> that moment has come. This is indeed their time. They're gonna be laughing at us all the way. Is this game going to be available eventually? I wouldn't count on it because, well, at least according to the Sonic Stadium on Twitter, Apple was in fact heavily involved in the production and funding of this game, meaning it probably won't come out on other platforms. It's kind of obvious how much money Apple has been able to put in this and, then, and what a Sonic game can look like when it actually gets that budget, when it actually gets that time to make something. The developer is Sega Hardline, which, if you don't know, was is the developer of games like Sonic Dash. They are like Sega's main mobile development. The thing about Sega Hardlight is that it actually isn't just a Sonic studio. They also work on porting Sega games, stuff like Two Point Hospital, Yakuza 0, and I'm pretty sure they did Sonic Forces for PC, but I could be wrong about that. I'll have to double check. What I'm getting at here is I wonder how long this game has been in development. I think the last time they actually released something was Two Point Hospital. I think 2020 or 2021. So they've had years to work on this game. Alongside also, I guess, working on Forces, Speed Battle, and Dash. But those games, I think if you're in the loop, hasn't actually had that many substantial updates recently, you know? They've had certain things, obviously events and whatnot, but they've been focusing on this game for the past few years. Personally, I'm a little bit skeptical to the quality of the game. It looks, like don't get me wrong, it looks really, really good. Kind of like a Sonic Speed Simulator, which I recently played for the first time. <laughs> Actually, right after I saw Dream Team, I remembered that it existed. It looks similar to that, more in terms of how you explore the environments, but it also looks way more polished and refined, you know? Like, Sonic Speed Simulator seems very grindy, and I don't really see that from what they've shown here. Basically, this doesn't look like a gotcha homunculus, where the main objective, in terms of money, is to get you to want to get, I don't know, bedridden big? A Sonic Dream Team generally seems like it has a beginning and an end, something Sonic Simulator does not have. Something mobile games generally do not have. Of course, we don't know everything about the game. It just seems like a way more traditional, less live service -y Sonic game. But the reason I'm kind of spe skeptical to whether or not this game is good is because Look, mobile games can be really, really good. Runners and Dash are very fun. It's just how you know, how complicated and depthful can a 3D action platform meant mainly for touchscreen be? I know that you can play this on TV and Mac, but that clearly isn't going to be the main audience for something like Apple Arcade. People who have Apple Arcade are mainly playing on their mobile devices. So even though the game looks ridiculously good, it doesn't look on rails. Something unlike, you know, Speed Battle. I'm just a bit concerned about how the game is actually going to function. Being that the main method of control is on a touchscreen, it's going to have to be really accurate. It's going to have to feel smooth. Because anyone who's tried to play 3D games using touchscreen controls knows that it's very slippery. I don't know if we really have anything to truly compare this to. No other traditional 3D Sonic game has ever had this treatment. Of course, along with being thrust onto mobile, while the controls are going to be different, it's like also the level design, which I, I don't think it, it doesn't look dumbed down. Look and feel and actually play and what they don't show is very different. 30 seconds is not a long time. The level design could be way more linear than it's letting on, and it could be a disappointment in that aspect. Other than that, I don't feel like Sega Hardlight really misses. Another thing is the game isn't actually that long. There's four zones, and what they've said is that there are 12 main levels. It seemed to me like the this isn't a, you have a world map and then you go here and here. It seems like everything here is interconnected. I suspect there is going to be some kind of in-between area that allows you to just run over to these levels. Kind of like an open zone similar to Sonic Frontiers. I could be completely wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. Mainly because everything here just looks so open. Different paths to choose from. There, There is no one path to go. In some screenshots, it is like that. Like this Amy screenshot, you can see that there's different 
platforms that you can jump off of uh, different doorways to go through. Sonic and Amy, I think, are going to be representing the speed part of the game. Uh, I think in the trailer, Sonic was boosting. I didn't see Amy doing it, but I assume, I assume she has the same power. Either way, what they're seemingly doing is filling three major archetypes. Those being speed, fly, and hit slash pathetic fly. Cream and Tails being the flyers and Rouge and Knuckles being the gliders. Honestly, I would have liked to see Cream be the booster and Amy be the hitter. Then I don't know if she has to glide. She could just flap her arms like wings before falling. Yeah, you know, that, that can be the fair trade-off for using the hammer. See, I have good ideas all the time. You know what I mean? Let's bring back Cream from Advance 2 where she just decimates everything in her way. We could call this mode Sonic Forces. God, the more I think about playing Dream Team, the more excited I get. Then I remember it's not on consoles. I cannot believe this shit is on Apple only. That's so Sega. A game that is not trying to give you original new gimmicks like the emerald powers or anything like that, wisps, just a game that's trying to be a basic, traditional, normal Sonic game with an art style that is as polished as this. Yeah, of course, of course we need to make it so very few people can actually play this. It's just so on brand for them to do something like this. It still doesn't make them any less crappy though. This looks so ridiculously good you know the game it just looks delicious the art style is great there's so much color everywhere i'm trying to look for certain things that look bad but i'm just not really seeing it this is the exact type of bubbly art style i've been wanting to do more of it's very similar to lost world which huh, i guess this mario ripoff is perfectly fine it's like the complete opposite of sonic frontiers which seemed very focused on realism you know hyper realism and this is just very it's very rounded it's curvy, it's kind of cartoony, without looking stale, which isn't easy to do. Way more stylized, obviously, like I said, there's like bursts of color, and god, these environments just look so good. You know, streams of water suspended in the sky, things in the background, that is just so much more going on in the background, and even uh, directly where the player is walking, you have like small amounts of like foliage, like on the beach level, there's a bunch of rafts, sponge thing. I, I, I'm zooming in on it right now, so you know what I'm talking about, so I'm not gonna embarrass myself by trying to say what that is. What I'm trying to say is there just seems to be a lot of effort and time put into not like you know a blanket term of the graphics small little details that i think were very lacking in recent sonic games it actually reminds me of kirby and the forgotten land now that i think about it being able to focus on four zones must have proven a great service to sega hardlight it doesn't exactly seem like they had to focus on quantity for this title and of course they did also reveal a new character named arium it's a nice design um i don't think we actually have a goat character. Yeah, the lamb fan base is, oh, that's a different animal. The, the sheep, no, it's also a different animal. The goat fan base is, is cheering, I guess. Well, they don't look like a villain. They look very kind. The main concept of the game is that Eggman took a dream device. And because she looks very, like, floy, I don't think she even has arms. Definitely linked to the ancient device that Eggman took called the Reverie, I think. Whether or not she's an ancient being, a ghost, is up for debate. We really don't know that much at this point. I can't believe this shit is Apple. I can't, I, I'm not gonna be able to move on from that. I, both my sister and my brother have Apple devices, iPads. So in fact, I actually am probably gonna be able to play this game because of the fact that they spent hundreds of pounds. And I said, I can't believe you spent that much money. You know, now, you know, I, I think it's a, a great purchase. I don't know, I'm weighing my options of whether or not I wanna give them money to be able to play this. You know, if there is a free way to play this, I'd prefer to do that. Even though the game looks really good, it feels kind of grimy paying them for this. I don't know, Sega doesn't get the money, but a statistic? And it tells them, yeah, we should do this more. Sonic Frontiers 2, Apple Arcade exclusive. That's not gonna, that's not gonna f happen, but it could. It could happen. Yeah, they actually did recently say, I think on, on the day of the actual announcement, which no doubt is linked to that, they said they want to reach and surpass Mario in terms of quality, which I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit split on that. On one hand, I think it's a great sign that Sega wants to reach for the stars. Mario just came out with a game of the year contender. The fact that they're saying this shows that they are more serious about the quality and polish of the franchise than we probably think. But on the other hand, Where's the proof? 
you know? <laughs> Superstars was not as good as it should have been. The biggest issue of it was that it had a lack of polish. It did not seem like a game that Sega really invested the time and manpower into. And you know, I could say the same for Sonic Frontiers. So unless we really see it with bigger scale titles, it's just gonna be more talk meant to hype you up and buy more products. Again, I honestly do think it's a good sign that they're trying, not trying to ignite the rivalry, but more say that, yeah, we're aware our competition is doing better than us. And it's a good thing to be aware of that. But the thought that a portion of the Sonic fanbase won't even be able to play this brand new title, it really is a sucky feeling, man. Either way, the game looks really, really fun. We'll just have to see how it goes from here. To wrap it up, being a Sonic fan, is painful, but you know, yeah, through the, through all the heartache, at least we can bite through the clouds and be able to experience just a little bit more pain. That's all from me. I'm gonna debate the moral implications of paying for Apple Max or whatever the stupid subscription's called.